Hello everybody. In this screencast, we're going to look at uh, this assignment, which is the first assignment that you uh, were provided to work on uh, API requests and uh, making API requests. Okay, so the assignment is very straightforward. There are users that you're going to get uh, from a server. This is user information. You have also the user uh, mood and you can add a user. You can also select an age group and after adding the user uh, you can also select the mood of the user after adding the user the user is added to the list and you're able to view the profile of the user you're provided with some files uh, one of them is the pdf the other one is a postman file it's a zip file i unzip it and then also a skeleton application so these zip files i already unzipped them the application that is provided to me i'm just going to open it here it is i'm opening it so while this is doing whatever it's doing, we'll just keep it for some time here. Now, how do you import uh, into Postman? So I open Postman, right? And you see here there is an import. And all you have to do is drag the JSON file from here to here. And it's going to create a collection. But I already have that collection. So you can import it as a copy or import it. You will have the collection. So basically, let me open up my collection here. Here it is. OK. So basically, this is my collection, right? You see, the first request is uh, a get request, and it is the ability. It gives you the ability to get the users. Basically, it provides you with the users that are in the system. You see that there is a JSON object, curly brackets, JSON object inside it. There is an attribute called users, which is a JSON JSON array, and the array is an array of JSON objects. All right, perfect. So we have that we are able to get users now let's see what app you are provided so you're provided with the skeleton app and let's see if we're able to run it all right the job application let's see if we can run this and let's have a look all right so what we will do is i would like first to get the list of users right so basically which is the first screen which is this users uh, fragment I'd like to get this list of users so basically I need to make this API call uh, this is the URL for the API call so now in order to make an API call I need to um, uh, install uh, or add OKHttp so what I did I went to Google type OKHttp and it takes me to here we'll come back to this page in a little bit but let's see what happens so here it is the app is running it takes you to the the users fragment and we'll go from there now what I would like to do is I would like to uh, go to the OK HTTP and would like to install the the library. So in order to install the library, I need this implementation line, right? And basically, I go to Gradle and the app Gradle, and and at the bottom of it, there are. Maybe I don't need these running devices here. I just add the implementation for OK HTTP and click on Sync now, and you see here it's trying it's pulling that library from the library repository and boom, and it's adding it to my project. So I have now OK HTTP in my project. I go to the users fragment and in the users fragment what I'm going to do is I am going to add a method called get users all right okay so let's say the method I'm going to add it let's say somewhere here private void get users and it receives nothing and here it is so I know that I need to make a get request why do I need to make a get request because it's, this is a get see here it's a get so this is the URL that I need to uh, connect to. And there are no parameters with this URL. So here is the URL that I would like. Here is the URL. And now let's see how to make a GET request uh, in OKHttp. OK so now I go back, go all the way up again. There are recipes at the top. And then I would like an asynchronous GET. And it's in Java. So I'm not going to copy it. But I'm just first I want to create a client. So here is you need the client. And it's not happy because it needs an import. Let's import it. So here we are. We imported it. Now you need to create a request. So here is how you create a request. This is a very simple request. It's just a URL. Here is my URL. And here we go. So I, I created the request. Here it is. All right. Here it is. This is the request. Now I'd like to fire up that request. So in order to fire up the request, you use the client that we created and then we do dot. And then you see, I'm looking for a method that is going to accept a request. See here, new call re accepts a request. Here it is. A request. And then in queue, new, and then callback, press enter. 
here it is so basically what happens is that when you make a request it makes an asynchronous request and there's a callback this is in case the request fails fails means that you didn't receive a response you're not going to receive any response but if you receive a response then it's going to hit here so now what i could do i could do e dot uh, print stack trace right oh another thing if you're making uh, api calls this means you need the internet right so basically that's why i have to go to the manifest here and add the internet permission where i'm gonna add it at the top uses permission internet and i added the internet permission all right now to make the request we first build the request like this and then we make a call and if there's a response we are here we'll check to see if a response is successful else we'll do something else. so basically let's say log d and if it's not successful uh, we're gonna say not successful or something not successful right so basically we'll figure out this case later but here if it's successful i'd like to get the body of the uh, response to get the body it's a string body response dot body dot string that's how it is response dot body dot string and let's print that log d and we're going to print the body that's the response that's coming in all right so now all what i have to do is make the call where am i going to make that call i'm going to make the call at the end on view on view created i'm just going to make this call here call get users right okay so we run this and i'm going to open up locat here it is and when the app runs it's still running I'll go open up Blockhead, and you see here I'm getting the response. Okay, so basically I'm getting the response. It is a JSON object, and I'd like to parse it. So basically what I'm going to do, if you go back to uh, Postman, you see that it is a uh, JSON object, curl brackets, and then I'm interested in users, which is JSON array. All right, perfect. So now let's go back to get users. All right, so to parse it, I know that there is a JSON object and I'll call it, for example, JSON object equals new new JSON object. I'm going to pass it the body. All right, so this needs a try catch block because when you're parsing, things can go wrong. Here it is. All right, so here it is. So here is the JSON object. Now I know that there's a JSON array. I'll call it users JSON array equals json object dot get json array and it's called users all right so i'm able to get the users now i need to loop over these users and then you look they are each one of them each entry is a json object right I'll copy that from here so i would like to loop and get each json object so i'll do for i tab right and then from i equal to zero all the way to users dot json array dot length the size of the array and now I know there will be a JSON object. I'll call it user JSON object equals users JSON array dot get JSON object at I. All right. So I have the JSON object. I want to change it to convert it to a user object, user Java object. All right. So in order to do that, if I go to the user models user here's the user java object and basically this is what the user object looks like this is what the user object looks like here it is it has a user id user group so i just created these user group user id right okay so what if i would like hide code revisions and uh, hide all code revisions i don't need these so i don't need these but anyhow so you see here the the here it is user id age group age group id group name url they match exactly what is the here so now what i'm going to do is i will create a constructor uh, user and basically I'll, it's going to receive a json object call it json and then once you have the json object then it looks like this is the json object that you receive and basically all i'm going to do is this dot uid uh, equals json dot get string and it's called uid so I have that. Now we need to add an exception to the method. Here is the user ID. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, six of them. So here is the group. 
see I made the the names of the variables or the names of the attributes to match the, the name of the variables that you have here match the names that are in the JSON just to make life easier for us right all right so here it is okay and then similarly the mood name the mood URL and the mood ID and the last one is the name of the user here's the name of the user all right so here they are we are able to get all the information with the user so now all what we need to do is to convert to the user so user user equal new user and pass it the user json object so we passed it the user json object now we have a user java a, a, a user a, a, a java object right so now we do m users dot add user so we added the user here now what i need to do is after all of this is said and done i need to notify the adapter that adapter adapter that the data has changed right so that it can reload the list right so basically this is a recycler view that we have here we set up the recycler view let's go ahead and reset it up so if we go here we don't have an adapter let's build one it's very easy this is a recycler view so i'll create a class uh, users adapter extends recycler view and it needs a view holder right class uh, user view holder extends recycler view dot view holder here we are and then the view holder let's fix it up create a constructor so we have the view holder fixed now also what I'm going to do is it's going to be the user view holder and now we go ahead and create a constructor okay right so it needs a recycler view user view holder recycler view dot adapter I need an adapter right go here and here we are go back again implement the methods three methods so I need a recycler view dot adapter and this is my view holder now it's very easy to get count is m users dot size so that's the size of the and now the view holder this method needs to return a view holder right so basically it needs to return a view holder I like to use binding so if you go back to the project and you will see that there is a layout that we already provided for you for the item user you know this the layout for this right so it has the image name and then the age group and then a trash can right it's called list it's called list item user perfect so the binder will be called list item user binding and call it we call it for example user binding equal list binding dot inflate get inflator comma parent comma false all right so that's the inflator so i have already the binding i'm gonna change the uh, constructor for the view holder to receive the binding and then here it says user binding dot get root because this needs a view and now basically i'm going to do uh, m user binding just this is the internal uh, value that i'm going to store i'm going to store the binding here so here it is m user binding equals user binding and here we go so now now here we want to return a view holder so new um, user holder and we use it we send it the binding here it is so the binding is very helpful so now what i always do is i go here create a public method void setup ui and this is going to receive a user all right so basically when you are on bind view holder you're receiving a view holder and you're receiving a position so from using that position we can find out what user you're interested in m users dot get at position so we have the uh, user and then we do the holder dot setup ui pass it the user all right here we need to set up the ui so we can use the binding now the binding comes handy see here i can do that text group dot set text uh, user dot get Oh, there is no getters and setters in the user so let's set up that these getters and setters oops getters and setters control a enter so all of them okay perfect so we are here user 
dot get age group name where it is so we set up the age group and then m user binding dot text you set up name dot set text user dot get name so you have the name of the user we already have the name of the user and we'll worry about this image in a little bit but let's just wire up things and see if we're able to get that far now i want to also store the user that's coming in so i can do user m user right and then basically i could go here and say m user equal user right okay perfect so we are able to do that we have the adapter copy this adapter here scroll all the way up maybe i can put the adapter here adapter here we are and then on view created we'll do this binding dot recycler view dot set layout manager new linear new linear layout manager get context so here is the linear layout manager binding dot recycle oh, get the adapter set up an adapter equal new uh, user adapter here it is and then binding dot recycler view dot set adapter to adapter so we have the adapter set up all right so when we say get users right so what we need to do is we not need to notify the adapter thing is to note is that here in this code block we are still on the background thread we are not on the main thread and in order to change the layout we need to go back to the main thread so in order to do that we say get activity dot run on ui thread new runnable all right and then here we just tell the adapter dot notify data has changed data set changed that would trigger the adapter i did this here because this run method is going to be executed in the main thread here we are outside the main thread all right we are on another thread and you cannot change the layout or the ui uh, from when you are outside the uh, main thread all right so let's run this I think things are wired up here we are we have all the users we don't have the images already set up so let's set up these images in order to set up the images we need another library so basically there is another library very nice called picasso uh android right so this is a picasso library here it is and it's only one line basically if we have the library in one line here it is picasso get load and you provide it with the url you want to load and then which image view you want to load it into all right perfect so i'll copy that we'll co come back to that now uh, now i would like to know to add the library so basically you see here it says that in order to add it you need the, to do the implementation and where i'm going to add it i'm going to add it here in the gradle i need this implementation for it right so what i could do is I, it doesn't have a number i need a number which is the version number so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy all of this right i'm going to come back here the package name for it and then i go to uh, open module settings right and i'm going to click on dependencies and i'm going to add a dependency and it's a library dependency type in the name of the library press enter and this is the latest one i click ok and click ok so basically you see here it added the dependency for me now it's syncing it bringing the library and so on so now i have the library in my code i'll copy this line that i talked about and where i'm going to uh, load the images it's in the view holder you see if you look at what's coming back you get the age group you get the name of the person and also get an image url which specifies the url where the image should be the the, the image that represents their mood here right so now what we can do the problem is that if you look at the image you see it's an http so let's see if it's going to work or no okay so where are we going to load it we load it here when we're loading the name the age group we'll do the same thing picasso you just copy it and paste it import the class what is my url the url is m user or user user dot get url here is the image url that's the image url and then the image view i want to load things into it's m user binding dot image and then there is an, an image mood uh, variable so let's see if we're able to do this let's see look at oh the images are not loading so why the images are not loading is because these images are http they are not https okay and that causes a problem because uh, if you want to load http content meaning clear text content you have to go to the manifest in the application 
and here in the application tag and type clear uh, allow uh, clear text traffic to true run the app again and now you will see that the images are appearing how did i know that because you see it is http the images are coming back as http so http is not encrypted traffic so you want to clear text traffic so you have to declare that in the manifest like this all right so i have the images loaded now i also have the uh, users loaded correctly now let's delete so basically in order to delete a user there is a delete method is the delete user method and the delete user method is a post right okay and what are the if you look at the body you just need to specify the user id in the post all right good so now in order to do to make that request right so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to create another method private void delete user and i'm going to pass string uid right the user id that i would like to delete okay so in order to do that i need to create a request that is a post request so i go back to recipes and what i would like to do is posting form parameters here it is in java here is how you create your for uh, first of all this is how you create the body of the request and then this is how you create your request so i'm going to copy these two i'm going to paste them here okay options import the class in a, in a post request the parameters are passed in the body so basically there is a uid and then whatever you're receiving is going to be here so basically if you look here there is in the body there is a user id the key is user id the value is the id of the user this is my url it's a post request so basically i'm going to come back here change the url to this i have the correct url i have the form body which has the parameters the uid and the uid and now here i'm just going to create the request so basically to create the request i'm going to do um, uh, client dot new call pass it the request and then dot in queue new callback very similar process right so now when you come back you check to see if response is successful what i'm going to do if the response is like successful i'd like to reload the list by just going and getting all the list of users again okay so i'm going to go ask it to go do get the users again so how to do that reload the list by just get activity dot run on new i thread new runnable get users all right so i'm going to ask it to go and get the users again and basically by asking it to go and get the users again it goes in creates a request client enqueues the request into client and goes from there so now the delete user needs a user id to in order to delete all right so basically i copy that from here where is that going to happen it's all inside the holder so in the holder we have m user binding dot image view delete dot set on click listener new on click listener and basically here i'm going to do delete user and then i have m user dot uid get uid basically i have the user stored here i can just go ahead and say get user id and i'm passing the user id so now let's run this and see here we are i'm going to delete this guy and basically you see the list goes and refreshes i have more users what's happening is that when you ask it to reload the users again like when we delete what we are doing let's see when we are deleting when we are deleting the user we're asking it to reload the users very nice but when we reload the users we are appending the users we are receiving into the list of users you see here we're just adding them so now before we add what we need to do is we need to clear them so m users dot clear clear all of them from the list the local list and then you're getting the fresh list here you're just adding them and you go from there so let's run it and see okay here we are now i click on delete you see delete they are deleted so delete works i can delete more but i want to keep them but anyway i'm deleting here there are two of them are deleted now what is what is left like let's say click the plus sign takes you to the add user i go back i still have two all right so now let's add so in order to add a user i need to enter a name find, figure out an age group and a feeling the the if you click on age it needs to list the age groups the age groups you get them from here also you see here these are the age groups which is also a get request that we could make right so age groups are a get request and then uh moods are also a get request here are the modes 
Okay, cool. So basically, in order to do all of this, let's in order to in, before we do the add, let's do uh, go ahead and do age group. Select age group fragments. So basically, this is uh, the age groups here. Select age group. All right. So in order to select an age group. I need to bring in these edges, right? So basically what I'm going to do is I need an array list first of edge groups, right? So basically I need an array list of you are already provided with I think edge group, I an edge group and you call it M edge groups equal new array list. So I have an array list that I'm gonna it's gonna hold my data I need a get request I already know how to do that because I can copy this stuff from here because the you get users is a get request but I'm gonna call it something a little bit different but let's see close all of that close this there we are okay a lot of things here I don't need actually I don't need all of this and all of this uh, oh no I need the body Oh yeah, all of uh, control Z, control Z. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so basically all of this is just get user. I'm gonna say get age groups, right? Or I could say get even get list or get okay get age groups, right? So that's this to get the age groups. I'm gonna copy the same thing. All right, I'm gonna copy the same thing for um select mood because we're gonna do the same thing for it so basically here and we need a client here's the client here's the client and let's fix it we'll we'll come back to the mood in a little bit so here is get age groups i need to go back here age groups you click on send you're receiving i know i have a mistake in my api it's receiving moods even though it should say age groups here we can fix that later but I'm getting and again an array status okay and this is my uh, uh, URL so here is the URL it's a get request okay so I'm just, that's why I used it's exactly the same as get users you see get users is a get request get age groups is just a different URL and different kind of response right okay so we are able to do this if we run it let's say we're gonna add get age groups yeah I can I can build the whole thing and then run it because I already did this before. All right. So if we go back here, age group, we have exactly the same. Uh, it has an age group. Here it is. Copy that from here. So age group has, a, has an issue. It's the same as mood here. Yeah. So yeah, it's a mistake. So anyway, I'm going to remove all of that stuff from here. This is what it should look like. This is the this is the what the api returns so i have a string uh, id name start age you can have the start age as integers if you need it sometimes you need the stuff for sorting so it makes sense to have it as an integer here uh, sorting and filtering so here it is i have that and then let's create uh, an empty constructor also i'm going to create another constructor which has Let's say not the ID, but it has a JSON object. JSON object, JSON, and here it is. Okay. This dot ID equals JSON dot get string. All right. So that's the, the ID. Yes. That's one is the ID. Two is the name. So basically, I have the name also. So here is the name, and this is the name, and this one is the ID. All right, so it needs to add an exception to the method here, and then similarly, I'll do this dot start age uh, equals JSON dot get integer with start age. So basically, that's because it's called start age, right? Start age, end age, and start age. Here we are. So we're able to parse. It's very straightforward. Here it is. It's a JSON object. Now we can do the getter and setter. Oops, sorry. Control N, getter and setter, and all of them. There it is. So I have to get a setter for the age group. Now it's very easy. So now in order now, what we want to do is we have the body. The whole request is a body. This is just an object. So I'm gonna go in and do 
json object json object equals new json object and pass it the body now it's not going to be happy it needs a try catch block right so we go here here surround by try catch block very nice and then we have a json array and call it for example the age groups json array equals json object dot get json array and then what's the name of the array if i go here i know it's by mistake called modes it needs to be called age groups but anyway here is modes and here we are so we have the age groups and then we do a for i same story we go loop over the array dot length and then we know we're going to take out of it a json object with uh, age group json object equals age group json array dot get json object at index i and then age group age group equal new age group and we pass it the age group json object m age groups dot add age group right so we're adding them here and then we also don't forget to clear it so m age groups dot clear right okay now we need to update the adapter right adapter stuff adapter right okay okay cool so now if we look back at this it's just a simple string so basically i can use the default adapter so i'll do that so close this here and i will use an array adapter of type what of types um age group age group right and i call it adapter right so here it is on view created here we are we know that we're gonna get call get age groups but before we do that we need to set up our adapter equal new array adapter get activity and then we pass it the uh, the layout android dot r dot layout dot simplest item one and then give it the list the list is m age groups here it is perfect so we have that and then uh, binding dot list view dot set adapter to adapter all right and then binding dot list view dot set on item they already have the set on item list listener setup all right so let's run it oh we never uh, i notified the adapter let's notify the adapter so where do we notify the adapter it's here again we are going to notify the adapter here after we do the parsing right so get activity dot run on ui thread new runnable adapter dot notify data set changed and we run it again all right we click on the plus sign let's pick an age here are the age it's printing this is the id of the of the java object so basically it's calling the to string and the to string is automatically returning the id we want to return the name right so basically we go in here and create go to the to string and i'm only interested in the name so i'm going to click here return the name so basically return name all right so now when we run this again okay click on the plus sign age group and it's displaying the age group now when i click on one of these age groups i need to send that age group all the way so basically uh, we are done with all the api calls and all of that stuff right on view created when you are here we need to send back this age group right so basically we need m listener dot m listener dot send selected age group which is m age groups dot get at position to send it out right so basically if you go to the uh, main activity what we are doing is send age group we are doing that and we have to pop the back stack pop the back stack and similarly also with the mood we have to pop the back stack all right so let's run it again i already have all the code that takes the data back so we are here click on the plus sign you click on the age group let's say 6575 it's getting 6575 you click here 1825 and so on right perfect so we are good in sending the age group we have to do the exact same code for the mood uh, so basically i it's exactly the same code so i'll go back all of this is out now we go to the uh, mood now let's do the parsing i can do the par start with the parsing if i want to so i go here moods here it is it will look something like this right 
there it is so i have id name and image url so i have that already now what i can do I create a constructor public uh, mood and it will receive a json object json right here it is <coughs> this dot id equal json object dot get string and so on mm -hmm. and here add the exception to the method signature so we have the id uh, we also need so basically this is id name image url <coughs> all right so we have them done right so the that constructor is done also i need the getter and setter for all of them so i can use them good so i have the mood already parsing done but i need to do the select mode fragment same story i'll say get moods right and then basically we just need to change the url to be the moods url here it is and here we are now if we look it returns back a json object inside the json object there is a moods array perfect so i can do exactly what i did actually with the um, with the groups right so basically but anyhow i'm not going to do that so here it is uh json object json object equal new json object i'll pass it the body it needs a try catch block and here is the try catch block here we are i know there is a json array uh, moods json array equal json object dot get json array and moods here it is for i all the way to the moods array dot length all right and then basically here i could do a json object json mood json object equal json moods json array dot get json object at i all right and then i can create a mood object all right so we're done with this let's see do we have a list we don't have a list let's add the list here an array list of mood and moods we have the array list of moods here it is so now here we are going to do dot add the mood to it and before we start we'll do a moods dot clear right now here we need an adapter and notify the adapter now is this a recycler view or it's a list view let's have a look so the mood not this one sorry it's the select moods and it has a list view this is a list view it's a list view perfect okay good so i need to create an adapter all right because you see it's a little bit complicated you know it's multiple so we go all the way up here this is what it looks like you know it's an image and the text beside it okay cool so in order to do this i'll do class array uh let's say call it mood adapter moods adapter moods adapter extends array adapter of type mood right the object type is mood and here we are now it needs a constructor there are so many of them i'm going to pick the constructor that has a list in it this one all right and then i do get view oops get view all right here it is and i'm um, this is a really boilerplate i know that get view should return the convert view right and then what's going to happen here is really boilerplate so basically i know that i'm going to use binding i love to use binding so list item mood so basically i have a list item mood binding i'll call it for example the mood binding right now to check to see if the convert view is equal to null right i'm going to do something else i'm going to do something else if it's equal to null i need to inflate create inflate the binding so it's the list item mood binding dot inflate get inflator comma parent comma false so i have the binding and then the convert view equals the mood binding dot get root all right and then convert view dot set tag 
to the mode binding. All right, so we're good here. Now, if the convert view is not null, I'll extract the mode binding from the convert view dot get tag, and it needs to be casted to a binding. So we go here and cast it. So here we are. Now we have the mode binding. All of this is just to get the mode binding. Mode binding dot set uh, then text view dot text set text to oh I need the mood so basically the mood item that we're looking at the mood mood item equals m moods m get at index I'll call it I have the I have the index which is the position right so here it is uh, position all right here it is you can do m moods or you could just say get get item at position right you can do that because you're already passing it in the constructor here see anyhow so we have the mood now we can do mood dot get name there it is we have the name of the mood now the other one is an image like if you look at the moods in it, it gives you an, a url right no we know how to do the url we already did that in uh, from picasso right so we go back to picasso i copy this again and here we are here it is and we import the library the URL is coming in in the mood object mood dot get URL and then the image view is in the binding mood binding dot image view all right cool so we have that adapter done yeah it's literally done that's our adapter now we go in and create an instance of the adapter so we go here we call this adapter here it is now on view created okay we do adapter equals new adapter and it needs one the context all right and then it needs the layout okay r dot layout dot list item modes and then it knows the list which is m modes so here it is we have the adapter binding dot list view dot set adapter to adapter all right so we have that already taken care of get modes all right, so basically it's exactly the same code. Now here we need to notify the adapter, get activity dot notify, run on UI thread new runnable uh, adapter dot notify data set changed. All right, let's run this and see if we're getting these modes. Here we are, plus sign, the mood, here they are, you pick a mood and it needs to go back. So basically it's not going back for some reason oh because we didn't do anything here we need to do something here when you click we need m listener dot the mood to m moods dot get at position right here it is right again okay we go here pick a mood say good it's not showing good here we'll fix that also because it's sending back an uh, a mood object see we're sending back a mood object and that mood object is received but it ne we need picasso in order to display it here also so let's see how if we go back to the add user fragment here it is add user fragment now if there is a selected age group if there is a selected mood now if it's visible and then we will do this binding dot text view mood dot set text is selected mood dot get name right and then here we also need Picasso to load it. So basically I'll go here and load it through Picasso. The image, right? So basically the image is selected mood dot get image URL and then binding dot image view mood, right? So basically now we have the image view mood. Here we are, you click on the plus sign pick a mood let's say they're very good so it's very good and here if you go back and say we're not well uh, if you get okay and so on you can pick an age group let's say here it is and basically we are sending it the whole object right the age group and the mood object okay now you enter a name and things go from there so basically let's say the submit button is somewhere here where is the submit button uh, uh, this is to select this is to select where is the submit this is to manage what to show right we already used the picasso library here now we can we need the submit button right binding dot button submit dot set on click listener new on click list so basically i could do a string here name 
equals binding dot text edit text. Uh, it's called edit text. Okay, good. So get string get text dot to string. So I have the the text and say say if name is empty and then I'm gonna show a toast. All right, get activity. I'll say enter name. Right. All right, do else if selected which one is first? Uh, let's see, age. Okay, so if selected age group is equal to null, uh, I'll do something and similarly we'll show a toast message select age group. All right, so that's this. And similarly, the mood, selected mood, select mood. Okay, so we have that. Else, everything looks good. We can go ahead and make the a at use. So basically, now here we need to call the API. Right, so basically to add a new user, we use we use this one to get the users, this one to get the modes, this one to get the groups, this one to delete the users, and then this one is to create a new user. It's a post request, so we did post before, right? We did it where? We did it uh, when we deleted. You see, delete was a post, right? This is the this is the URL. I'm gonna copy that from here. Here's the URL that I will need. So basically, let's say we go in and i'm going to do this i'm going to uh, private uh, add new user let's see what kind of parameters we're going to send it and it's void okay this is the url that we're going to use create user the body has the name of the user the age group id and the mood id these are the stuff that i need i need the name of the user the group id the age group id and the mood id you see these groups the the age groups have an id which we already captured and the moods also have an id which we already captured so we have this data already in the objects right so when we click on create user we need an age group id a mood id and the name all right good so now let's go back to uh, okay http and uh, what i would like to do is post form parameters here it is and copy that from here and uh add users doesn't have uh doesn't have a client so i'll copy that I'll add a client here we are okay options import 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 and imports okay good so here it is good so now i know the url this is my url okay control x and here it is control v now i need the user the username so basically i need a string here that tells me the name of the user right okay So I can I can get the name. I also need the age group, the age group, and I also need the mood ID. Okay, good. So here is the string mood ID. Okay, so I'm gonna receive them. The name here is the name, and the variable is called name also. And then similarly, I add three parameters. You see here there are three parameters: name, age group ID. And mood ID, so here is age group ID and also mood ID. So I created a request. Here is the form body. The form body has the name, age group ID, and the mood ID exactly like what the API needs. And we created the request with the form body, right? Now we do client dot new call. You pass it the request dot in queue new callback. All right. So e dot print a trace just for debugging and if everything looks good if the response is successful right we're going to do something else we're going to do something else now if the response is successful we just want to go back right so basically we need to get activity dot run on ui thread new runnable and we do m listener dot done adding user right otherwise we can do a toast message and get activity we could say for example um error adding new 
user, right? Something like that, right? All right, so basically, in order to add this, we call this method, we call it here, add new user, and what we need is the name of the user, and then the group ID, so we have the selected, select, selected group dot get ID, and then we have the selected mood dot get ID. So we have these values, here it is, right? We have these values, and we just call the method this way. We pass it on the IDs. We could not even pass it these two other parameters, and we can derive them, because these are global variables, right? But anyhow, all right, let's run it and see. <coughs> add a new user let's say this is going to be Alice Green and I click on submit it says select a group okay I'll go ahead and select a group here is the group select a mood let's say very good and I click on submit Alice Green is added add another one test user pick an age group here it is pick a mood here it is submit and here's my test user able to delete them also and we're good so basically i'm able to to uh, to do all the process uh, using uh, the apis that were provided you have to be a little bit careful when you do these apis you have to figure out is it a post or a get what are the parameters that need to be uh, passed and what url is uh, that you need to use and if you need to pass the data you need to figure out if it's json is this json object json array and then you go down until you get down into the uh, deeper into the object to retrieve the data from it all right, please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.